would you try to save these? Or how would you try to save these? That's a better question. Hey, garden friends. Today, we are going to talk African violets. And I have a confession to make. Yes, I made a big boo-boo. I have been negligent in the care of many of my houseplants, including my beloved African violets. Now I have videos, they're kind of rough, they're older, and blog posts on African violet propagation and how to repot them and all that. And I just kind of got busy this summer and they got pushed on the back burner. So as you can see, some of them completely bit the dust those are compost. There's no saving those. But I have a few others, like this one. This one still has green. This one is a trailing or a miniature. I think it's a trailing. Trailing African violet. They ha they're smaller and they have smaller flowers. Now this one seems to be doing okay. I'll just clean it up a little bit and go with it. It's got lots of tiny buds. Look at this little flower on this one. Is it focusing for you or is it focusing on my face? Anyways, yeah, that one is just a delicate pink. I think I got this one at Green Acres Nursery in Elk Grove. And then I have a few others. Now this one is super dry and I've been trying to keep up with watering. Um, but terracotta does dry out faster and that's a good thing with African violets. That way you don't overwater. The main thing people do wrong with many plants is overwatering. Now this one is uh, had been blooming. But you see the pot's crumbling and it's rather messy. So I'm going to repot that one. And then others, like this one has the big long, this is, I think this is a trailing. It may not, it may just be a miniature. Playful Spectrum, I'm not even sure that's the right name on here. So I'm gonna repot that and make it where it's now flush with the soil surface. And these two, these also need to be, even though the, they're not that much too far from the soil surface, they do need to be repotted and just freshened up both of these. Yeah, this one too. This one's, the neck is just about two inches long, so that's okay. So this one has just outgrown its pot completely. And so I can pot this one up into a slightly larger pot. Going up, when you go up with African violets, you only want to go up very a small amount as far as the size of the pot. And then here's another trailing one that is struggling and it's going to get redone as well. So how would you treat these? Would you just give up the ghost and go get new ones? Some of them look like it, that would, could be a good choice, but, or would you go ahead and repot them? Let me know in the comments below. Sometimes I do try to salvage plants when it's really just best to start from scratch, or I could take leaves and start those, propagate those and start over rather than trying to revive a plant that's just clearly past its prime. Alrighty, let's get rolling. I'm going to mix up some soil and I'll show you how I do that as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends because it goes a long way in helping me and my channel and listen to the roos out there. They're just being crazy. They're just making sure we're all hearing them. All right, I use a good potting soil, a good quality is what I mean. And this one is E.B. Stone's Edna's Best. That's what I can get locally. There's lots of brands that are very good, um, have good drainage. I have the bag down here, and I'm just going to put it in my tub. Now, a lot of times I'll have a big bag of perlite, and that um, I use that. But I am out, totally out. And this is pretty good draining. I mean, it has little bits of... I can see wood fibers in it and a little bit of perlite. Perlite just loosens it up. So if you do have a tendency to overwater, then um, yeah, it helps. It helps keep oxygen in there. When you overwater, it's uh, you drown them or they don't get enough oxygen. This is just some builder sand. I'm gonna put a little bit in there, not 50-50. I'd probably put a quarter amount and I eyeball it. There's no absolutes with this. And that will help with drainage. And you know, some things just like sand. I'll show you in a minute, and I showed you in a prior video, um, some violas 
they reseeded themselves. And what they reseed themselves in? Builder sand or paver sand. And they're just going crazy. So it seems that um, things will, re will recede very easily in sand. I had a succulent planter made from an old shallow wheelbarrow and it was full of sand. And I had black eyed Susan. I had everything you can think of daisies, larkspur, poppies, everything. Oh, my timer. I'm making bread. I I'll be right back, I promise. Alrighty, I got it all folded, kneaded, and all that kind of stuff, stretched and folded. I'm doing sourdough bread this time. Um, yeah, the last batch I made, it was okay, but it was a little more uh, brickish than fluffy in the airy holes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying again. So I have my soil mixed up here. Um, yeah, when you're repotting African violets, you want to clean up all the dead or damaged leaves and um, you can, for the amount of foliage you remove, you can re remove the same amount of roots. Try to think of what I was saying. So let me get rid of all this. This was pretty moist. And let me see if this one's even going to be salvageable. So trailing violets, they throw off these long trailing limbs. And that one's got a little green on it now. I'm trying to dig through here and cut off the stems that only have dead leaves on them. So, um, and it's a little tricky because it's pretty tight quarters. But that limb I just cut off, I can see the green at the base of it. So that's good. That means it'll throw out new growth. This one's pretty dried up. Now what's great about this, there's not a whole lot of roots. Ooh, you know, it might have been just, oh kind of squishy. I might have been overwatering it thinking it needed it because it looks so dead. So I need to really be careful. Um, this one was in a plastic pot and maybe I'll put it in a smaller pot so it can recover. Sometimes they like tighter quarters um, before you move them up to a bigger pot. Let's see. I know this part's kind of boring but I really want to salvage this well. And now that's, that's got a lot of green on it, so I'm just going to cut out the dead on that, but I'm going to save the entire stem. That's really, those roots are looking pretty bad. I don't know if I can salvage this. Maybe, just maybe. I'm going to cut off a lot of the bad roots because there's still some up here where it's firmer. And the squishy ones, I'll just cut it off. So... Yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna get real hairy with it there. Now these stems still all have green in the center. So I have hopes that it will recover. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these smaller pots to put it back in um, instead of the larger one. Then I will have a less tendency to overwater it and it can re recover. Now one thing about these trailing ones is they just bloom and bloom and bloom. But on the other hand, they can start looking a little messy because of the big big vines they send out that are full of bloom, so you don't want to cut them off. But anyways, keeping them in check keeps them keeps them pretty and manageable. Alrighty, so now I removed all the squishy roots from my overwatering. It was my fault because I've been so lackadaisical about my indoor plants. I've been so busy. And I love my little African violets in the winter. They usually are so, like the uh, amaryllis and other blooms that just are so pretty when nothing else is blooming. Now this pot, I will take in and clean up, sanitize it. So let's go on, there's one. I'll set that over here. It's plenty moist, I don't need to water it in. So this one in this pot, let me see if it's going to come out easily. Yes. And that one is very dry. So I'm just going to see it has a longish neck. Let me get it over there to you without drag it. See underneath here, you can see the longish neck. That I'm going to sink down further into the 
pot. Okay. Now this part has roots coming out of it, so I'm going to trim up this part. And then I'll remove some of the foliage. And that will work fine instead of trying to bury this whole long piece. I'm just going to go with the piece that's back here directly beneath the foliage. It won't hurt it. You just remove, well, especially the dead and dying foliage. I'll do it over. I have a bin down here that all the stuff is going into. Now, I don't mind. I had no diseases, so I don't mind uh, letting the soil go in here with this uh, fresh soil. So I know a lot of people are, are much pickier, and it's not that's okay. We all have our little ways of doing things, and if it works for you, great. Okay, so... Let's get these trimmed off. Now, if you have any other tricks, I really want to hear them that really help you to keep your African violets gorgeous and blooming away. Like I said, usually I don't have any issues. I just have been so unattentive to them. Okay, so I don't think that this one needs to go in a very small pot. Oops, I broke that leaf. Now, if I wanted to, I could take off some of these young leaves and, and propagate them. And as bad as I've been, I sh probably should, just to see if I make sure I don't lose any of these. I don't see any other with this leaf pattern, so I might take some leaves off of this. So this pot is kind of yucky, so I'm going to set it aside. But I do like terracotta pots for African violets, so I'm going to grab one because it's clean. And I need one of my little, you can use a piece of crockery like this, bo broken piece to put in there to prevent the soil from falling out, falling through and to help with drainage or prevent it also from cl clogging up. So here's my African violet. I'm sticking it in here where the crown of the plant will be level with the surface of the soil. So. But I leave a little bit um, around the, oh dear, I just broke off another leaf. Well, that one is going to get propagated. Did I break this one too? Yep. They're very delicate. They're usually not that delicate, so I know they're struggling. So, Ooh, another one. So all of those are going to get propagated. So you notice I have a little bit of room around the edge to water. And one thing, and I've put this in my one blog post about why I love terracotta pots, you can see how much moisture is in there. It'll have a line, a dark line, when there's moisture in there, and then you have a tendency not to overwater when you can see that. Okay, so that one is next. This one will need to be watered because it was so dry in the other pot. So I need to go ahead. Let me see, do I have a clean little pot? Here's when it's all been cleaned up. And I'm just gonna put this in here, same soil. And I'm going to put these leaves just right down in here to where the bottom of the leaf is touching the surface of the soil. So another one down in there. And then where was, didn't I have, oh there. Oh no, here's one. And here's one. So I'm just gonna poke those down in there. And then I put them inside of a little humidity. Well, it's actually like a Sterlite tub that has a lid. And uh, I stick them in that. I'll water it in, I'll stick them in that, leave them alone. I don't even have to water again because it just keeps it moist in there. And then sometimes it takes a while for them to start putting out little babies, but they will put out little babies. Some people like to do it in water. Um, where they just have this the tiniest little smidge of water in the bottom of a container and they set them down in it and uh, they'll start making babies from the end of the stem. Like, oh, here, here's one, like right down here at the end of the stem. I'm gonna put that one in there too. Now you can do one leaf. I will do a uh, few and then I'll separate them when I pot them up. So, okay, that's gonna go into a little humidity tray. So this one's not too bad as I break off a leaf. Um, 
but it definitely looks like it needs some help and the stem, the, the neck has gotten elongated. So let me see if this one's really wet. It's wetter than the terracotta pot ones, but not too wet, yeah. This one had a lot of, I sometimes use um, horticultural sand, which is a little grittier or bigger pieces of sand than the uh, paver sand, which I like that better. I just couldn't find any recently. I really like it. It's also pretty. I like to put it along the top. All right, so on this one, I need to cut off some of the dry old stems back to the stem itself. And it doesn't have too many, um, too much foliage. So I'm gonna trim back the roots. Trim them back and then I will Go ahead and, should I put this in a terracotta? I don't know. I've done very well with these self-watering pots in the past. I just need to be more cognizant of my watering. Okay, now again, you want the neck to be at the surface of the soil. So, or should say the base of the leaves at the surface. So let's see if we can do that here. We need to empty some. It's a pretty long stem there. Let's see if I got it far enough. I might have to redo it. Just broke another leaf. I'm just being a little bit rough today, aren't I? But I want to start these anyways. So I'm brushing off. Oh yeah, it's perfect in there. So I'm gonna get here up close so you noticed you cannot see the neck. So you just, the leaves are right at the top of the surface, the base of the leaves. Alrighty, there's another one down. So this one I think is pink and white, or maybe this one is. But that one again needs to be redone. Now they say you should do this like every five or six months. Um, yeah, I, I probably did it last year. And then over the summer they were Severely neglected. Okay, I need another clean pot. These it won't hurt them to sit for a minute. Some people call that curing or hardening over. Now, Gundaroo. This one has its name on it. So let me see if I could do this with you up closer, so you can really see me doing it. Maybe kind of point you down. Maybe I do it right here. It doesn't matter if it falls on the ground. I can clean it up. So I'm going around and looking for the dead. So this piece is pretty much dead. So focusing on it and not me. Now this is a trailing, trailing miniature. And these ones just are so pretty. And it's, even though it's struggling, it's blooming. Look at how it's blooming. Can you see the little flowers in there? Alrighty, let me pull it up. I need both hands here. So, yeah, the underneath of this stem has a bunch of dead. I'm wondering if I could just plant one of those stems and get another one. It's got, like, looks like little rootlets on it. You never know. I um, just got, oops, I broke off two pieces, so I am, I'm going to try to root them. I'm such a klutz. Okay, find the end of that one. Pull off all the dead. So, let me show you. I haven't looked this one up, so I'm gonna test this out. Um, now, I trimmed it back where it's just got a little piece of the, what they call the neck usually, and I'm gonna put that into soil. And I'm going to try to root that little piece. I wonder if this will fit down in that. I had a bunch cleaned up, like I said, and now I don't know where I put them. But these ones really worked well, well for a lot of things. And one thing I like about them is you, then you can see um, the roots if they get close to the edge. All right, I'm just sticking that neck part down in there, and we're going to test it out. I'll definitely bring you back if that roots. And even if it doesn't, I'll tell you it didn't. 
this oh. one isn't this one's so pretty I did show you but it's, it's dry so I need to make sure and water it it's got a few dead leaves but I'm just going to pull them out I don't even have to get my shears down in there my little scissors just pull the dead out the rest of it that one looks a little toasted it does not have a neck so I can just leave it in this pot I think I'll put this on my kitchen windowsill so I can enjoy the blooms and take better care of it because it'll be right there. I'm going to remove this one long leaf. And I just may try to start that. This is such a pretty little pink thing. So that leaf. Now when they start getting where they're looking blanched out or yellowing, or that could be the, too much light. And I did have the light, um, the grow lights on the shelf. So maybe that's what that's from. So I will put this, like I said, on my kitchen windowsill. This one's grubby, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. And I'm going to write on the pot that this is the light pink. I don't know if I have a Sharpie in here. I have my paint pen. Light pink double. LT pink double. Alrighty. Okay. So I will bring you on back when I'm done with all of these. And I'll show you where I put them. And then I'll bring you on back when I am all done. There was something I failed to mention that trimming back the roots, like this has all these long roots, that actually spurs them to produce new roots, fresh new roots. So if you've got some that look like they might be getting root rot or other struggles, then go ahead and trim them back. Now this has very little foliage right now. Um, so I'm just trimming off this to tidy it up and then I'll sink it down in the soil. But because it uh, doesn't have that much foliage, trimming off the roots isn't going to hurt it. And I will probably take off, well, I won't probably, I will take off that big leaf and I will start that in a little pot and then that doesn't have too much foliage for the roots to um, pr uh, support. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the pot it was in. And then because it's shorter now with lack, less roots, I can get it down in there where it's not a big neck showing. And, um, and it can do better. Now I do have a moisture meter and that does help. And the one I had prior, I had left in a plant and then it rusted. So it stopped working and I just got another one and it doesn't seem to be working right. So I need to turn it. Uh, return it and get another one but um, yeah that helps really a lot especially with African violets because the top can feel dry and you can't really stick your finger down far enough to figure out if it's um, drier below where it, the roots can really get um, in trouble. Now these are the self-watering pots so water sits here so in the bottom it draws it up but still you can overwater, so you just have to be really careful. A lot of times you can tell by lifting the pot whether or not there's, it's still moist in there or not, but sometimes you can't if you're not used to it or different size pots have different weights, different type, like the clay pots are heavier, but as I said with the clay pots, you can see where the moisture line is. It's a darker color and you can even touch it and feel that. So, all right, there's another one down. And I'll go ahead, this one has been washed, but I'm going to go ahead and start this leaf in it anyways. And I don't use um, hormone, you could, but I just stick it down there where the base of the leaf is touching the soil surface. And another one for my container. I will get that container and show you how that works. Okay, I'm back. Put my hair up, ate my lunch, and now I found my little container I was telling you about for putting the leaves. To, I'm starting leaves in and how it creates a little humidity box whatever that is great for starting the leaves now sometimes it takes several months um, for these to get going so be patient just keep it out as long as they're not rotting fine I do need to water these a little bit before putting them closing it up because see like this close it up I see that one's touching but I think it'll be fine. A lot, sometimes when they touch things like that, um, they'll rot, but I'm willing to take the chance. I could cut it off a little bit and go with that. Okay. These are all ready to go in the house. And 
these are ready to go in the house. Oh yeah, here's some more of these other ones I did. So I'll take them all in. You see, I've got way too many. It's probably why. You know what, I think I'm gonna put this one in here. That's what it probably is. Okay, and then this one, this one looks good to go. So back in, and I'll put them at the front of the light rack where I can see them. And I think we can revive all of them. I will be sure and come back and report in with you on how well they do. And we'll go from there. Alrighty, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video, dinking around with me in the greenhouse, reviving some ailing African violets that uh, is from my own lack of care. So let's give them a whirl. I, they all look really good. So I think they're gonna be just fine. You know, African violets are a lot tougher than you think. And um, yeah, I've had some of these for years. One of this one right here was actually one of my grandmother's. And um, yeah, it's had, she had it for years. So that thing's probably, well, the parent is probably 60 years old. So okie dokie. I'll see you guys in the next video where we will be. I'll probably take you along, I think. Um, I'm going to be prepping pots and some winter sewing. This is the middle of December and you don't have to wait till January. Some people wait till January and I'm doing something a little bit different this year. So practice, not practice, testing something out. So I will take you along for that. See you later.